I want to talk about the capital market line. What the capital market line does is it shows us the trade-off between risk and return for a portfolio that consists of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. Now if we look at a graph of this, here we have um, a graph in expected return standard deviation space or return risk return space. And we start with the efficient frontier here, okay, this red curve here. And you should recall that the efficient frontier is the port or all the portfolios that have the highest expected return for a given level of risk. So actually there are portfolios inside here under this curve, but they're not as good because we could pick a portfolio here, but at the same level of risk, we could move up to the efficient frontier and find a portfolio that has a higher expected return for that given level of risk. Now, how do we derive the capital market line? Well, if we have a risk-free asset that we can borrow and lend at, if we draw a line from the risk-free asset that's just tangent to the efficient frontier, we get the capital market line. And the capital market line assumes that everybody has the same expectations. So this efficient frontier is the same for everyone. And as we draw out right here, this is the, if you were right here, Okay, right, I didn't label it, but this would be, let's say, point M, the market portfolio. This would be the case where you were buying, putting all of your assets in the market portfolio. Now, someone who's a less aggressive investor might choose to lend some money, that is, buy some bonds or buy some treasury bills, and they would be in here somewhere. So they might, if they were, let's say, halfway in between, they would be putting half their money in riskless assets and half their money in the risky portfolio. Now someone who's a more aggressive investor would choose to invest, would choose to actually borrow money at the risk-free rate so they could buy more of this risky portfolio. Okay, so they would buy a margin or they would leverage their portfolio. So let's take a look at the, uh, the capital market line in a little more detail. Okay, first, let's take a look at the slope of the capital market line. Well, it's a straight line, so it has a constant slope. And the slope here is going to be the rise over the run. The rise is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. Okay, over the run, which goes from the standard deviation of the market to zero. So this slope is expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate over the standard deviation of the market. And we sometimes refer to that as the market price of risk. So that tells us how much extra return we need, how much extra expected return we need to take on an additional unit of risk. So the equation for the capital market line is that the expected return for some portfolio is going to be equal to the risk-free rate, that's the intercept term, times the amount of risk we choose, the amount of standard deviation we choose for the portfolio, times this slope of the capital market line or this market price of risk. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Suppose the expected return on the market is 12% and the risk-free rate is 4%, and the standard deviation of the market is 2%. Let's find the expected return for a portfolio that has a standard deviation of 1%. So this is going to be someone who's not an incredibly aggressive investor. They want to take less risk than the market, so they're actually going to lend some money at the risk-free rate. So if we plug into this equation here, 4% plus 1% times 12 minus 4 divided by 2, and we get 8%. So if we looked at a, this on the graph, you can see that if you took this level of risk, this is the expected return you would get. So this is a person who would put, for example, half their money in the risky portfolio, okay, or in the market, 
and half their money in treasury bills. Okay, let's take a look at a second example here. Suppose the expected return on the market is, again, 12% and the risk-free rate is 4%, but this time the person chooses a portfolio with a standard deviation of 3%. So if we work through this equation, we get the expected return of the portfolio is 16%. So this is the case where the person has chosen to leverage their portfolio, that is, borrow at this risk-free rate of 4%, so that they can increase, so they can buy more of this risky portfolio M, and they expect a return of 16%. Now, one of the things that's neat about the capital market line is that regardless of your risk preferences, it argues that everybody should buy this market portfolio right here. And the only difference is, is that some people will be lenders, that is, they will borrow money, I'm sorry, they will lend money to the government by buying treasury bills or treasury bonds and buying some of this risky portfolio. Others will leverage their portfolio by, they'll borrow money so they can buy more of this risky portfolio, but everybody buys the same portfolio. So there's a strong argument theoretically for buying index funds. That is, rather than picking individual portfolios or individual stocks simply buy an index fund because that's going to be the most efficient portfolio based on this model.